My dear brothers and our dear listeners, wherever you are, I want to speak about a very simple subject to clarify a misunderstanding. Uh, many people have been calling onto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making dua for months on end, sometimes years, years on end, and they say my dua is not accepted. And ultimately, shaitan overcomes them and they feel that there's no point in making dua. There's no point in asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's not answering my questions. He's not answering my demands. He's not answering my requests and my pleas. So what's the point of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So this is what I want to clarify. That the reason why we fall into this misunderstanding or this thought is because of a misunderstanding of the dua itself. What exactly is dua? I didn't know what dua was. Uh, most people would think that dua is, I ask Allah for one, two, three, four, five things, or one or two things, or X, Y, and Z, and He's supposed to give them to me because uh, everybody tells us, uh, as a Muslim, you should ask Allah and He's there for you and He gives and He is the only one who can give, so you should be asking Allah and uh, He should give me. That's all I know. So we see dua as a selfish act. Right? I don't mean selfish in a bad way, I just mean that we think of dua as something that we want for ourselves. So it's a need that we're extending and we expect something in return. So then I read a hadith, and the hadith says, the Prophet ﷺ says, dua mukhul ibadah. Dua is the kernel of worship or the essence of worship. Which, or dua huwal ibadah, like dua is worship. It's like, how is dua worship? Because my understanding of worship is that we're giving something, offering something to Allah. In Salat, when we pray Salat, we're offering something to Allah. We, we don't expect to get, well, we only expect to get reward back, but we're actually expressing a devotion to Allah in Salat. When we're fasting, uh, we, are ex we are offering this to Allah. That be, Allah be happy with us, you told us to do this, we're doing it. But when it's dua, we see this as a selfish act that I'm asking you for something for myself. So how is that ibadat? So then when I looked into the hadith, this was many years ago. When I looked into the hadith, the hadith was very clear. It said, it, the explanation was that like in salat and all of the other worships, when we're offering something to Allah, the reason we're offering that to Allah is because we realize that He deserves it. He is entitled to that. We're commanded to do that, and uh, that's our job. We're slaves of His, that's why we offer Him service. That's, that's what we do. How does dua fit into this? The way dua fits into this is that dua is also worship in the sense that when I'm making dua to Allah, while I may be looking at it selfishly, the reason I'm making dua to Allah is because I realize I'm in need. I'm a slave, I'm helpless, I'm dependent. And only, he's the only one who can give me. He's the only one who can facilitate. He's the only one who can arrange and organize whatever I want to happen. That's why I'm calling out to him. So I am literally off. I am literally expressing to him my helplessness, my need, which is essentially slavehood. That's what sl being a slave means. That I am expressing my need. That I can't do this myself. I can't ask anybody else. I have to ask you. That's why it is worship. In fact, if you do it properly with the right intention, it is the kernel of worship. It is the essence of worship because we're saying, I am absolutely helpless. All other doors are closed. Only you can help me and, and, and give me. That's why it becomes a worship. Now, as soon as we understand that, the whole philosophy of dua changes. So now let me explain the philosophy of Allah. 
uh, the philosophy of dua. You know, when I make a dua, so I'm going to give you an example. Let's just say me and what's your name? Ridwan. Me and his brother Ridwan, may Allah bless him because I'm using it as an example, so I'm going to make dua for him. And you're going to say I mean, right? So me and Ridwan, we both want to buy a certain car. There's only one of those in this area available. He really wants it and I really want it. We both start making dua for it. You can put three people into the picture if you want. Put as many as you want. Right? Let's say four of us want that, want that car. There's only one of those cars. Like it's a very special car with a specific number plate or whatever it is. I'm making dua. He's making dua. You're making dua. Who is Allah going to give it to? Is he going to say, I'll share it between you? You take a quarter. You take a quarter. He's not going to do that. One of us may get it or none of us may get it. Somebody else might get it. So if you're making dua and I'm making dua, whose dua should Allah accept? Do you know how hard Allah's job is? Not that it's hard for Him, but from our perspective. There's multiple people asking multiple things. Allah has to run a universe. And everything in the universe is connected to something else. We are just, me and you and everybody else, we're just a little pawn in this universe. We're just this little, little individual element. And we want Allah to do what we want. So when we call out to Him, and we make a dua to Allah, Hey Allah, you know, I give you a card, give me this and give me that and give me this. And then after that, when He does it, He's like, Kya kar diya? Tumne kuch nahi kya? Like, you haven't done any of this, what's your problem? It's like, you know, the worker comes in the morning, you have a business and you got your employees, listen, today we need to do one, two, three, four, five. They only manage to do two things or nothing. It's like, man, what's wrong with you? Is Allah our slave? Is Allah our servant? That he has to do what he wants? Now, so that's now a number of things. That's the first thing. He's not our slave, he's not our servant. So then you're saying, then why should we ask him? The reason we ask him is there's multiple benefits of asking him. Okay? However, the main thing is that you have to remember one thing. We're going to ask Him. But at the back of our mind, in the bottom of our heart, it has to be there. That if it's good for us, it's going to come for us. We want it. I want that car. But I must also have at the bottom, worst case scenario, that look, it might not be good for me. So I might not get it, but I'm going to do my best to get it. And if I can't, khalas, then I'll get another car. <laughs> There's a lot of other cars in the world, isn't there? Because ultimately, Allah is going to make that decision based on the way it's going to work in this world and how it's going to affect different people. Because the world we live in is interconnected, regardless of what you think. There's a kid I know right now, 20-something years old, just about to get married. He doesn't want any of his relatives to know who he's going to see and so on, because he doesn't want people to talk. I was like, you can't stop this, man. They're going to ask you who you're getting married to. When are you going to have a kid? You can't stop people from talking. But let me give you a better example. Let's just say you actually bought a car. So you about you got a car. It's a nice red BMW. And you have a garage. I don't know if you do or not, but you have a garage and you, you bring in the middle of the night and you just put it into the garage. You have 10 neighbors. Now, you're not going to keep it in your garage. You're going to eventually take it out, bring it back in. You're not there to show off with the car. You just bought a car. I guarantee you, your 10 neighbors, every single one of them will have a different opinion about you and your car. So imagine uh, the possibilities of reactions. One is going to say, Oh, mashallah, my neighbor's got a car. He deserves it. He had a banger before. He's got a good car now, alhamdulillah. Another one is going to say, Why did he get a red car for? Third guy is going to say, Why does he get a car? How come I can't get a car? How did he get a new car for? Do you understand? There's going to be different reactions. Can you stop those reactions? No. Anything we do in this world has a reaction has an effect because we live in a quantum world where everything is interconnected all right anybody who wants to live his own life alone like you know go, going i mean go, going to a cave somewhere right and then just worry about the insects around you otherwise you know you live among people people that's how people are right now allah knows the future now if you get that car for example allah knows that if i get that car i'm going to show off with it i'm going to feel so arrogant that I'm probably, and I'm going to drive it so fast, because it's actually a very fast car, that I'm probably going to end up, a'udhu billah, you know, crashing it somewhere. Allah doesn't want that to happen. He doesn't think I'm ready for that car, or that kind of a car yet. So he's not going to give it to me. I can ask him every day, he's not going to give it to me, because he doesn't think it's useful for me. Or, maybe, the other person, or me, he wants me to get in an accident, to teach me a lesson. Then he might even give it to me. 
That's all Allah's choice. Our job is to do our best to ask. So now what Allah says that, look, you have to ask. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you don't ask Allah, the one who does not ask Allah, Allah gets angry on him. Now you're going to say, man, he's saying, uh, 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 what do you call it? I'm going to get angry on you if you don't ask me, but then he doesn't give me. No, he does. Every single dua gets a response and gets a reaction. So Allah has promised that he will give one of three types of reactions. Whatever you ask for, right? He's either going to give you that and you'll be happy with it, right? Most people would be happy with whatever they ask for, right? Majority of people, that would be happy. If he can't give that to you because he wants to give it to somebody else or he thinks it's not appropriate for you, you're not ready for it or it's harmful for you or X, Y, and Z, in many cases we actually find out later, oh, I'm so glad I didn't get that, right? Sometimes you, you find out later. He won't give it to you. But what will he do then? Instead of giving that to you, he'll do two things. Number one, he'll replace a calamity and, re, re, and, and get rid of that calamity and eliminate a calamity that was impending to come on you from somewhere or something. The more dua you do uh, correctly, you will be freer from calamities that were possibly going to afflict you. Right? The only way to check it out is don't do any dua and see what happens. Right? So every time you make a dua, one of the benefits you get if you don't get the thing you ask for is that Allah is going to repel a calamity from you, a difficulty or a mushkil or something like that. So that you're getting a benefit anyway, mashallah. Ten, five times a day you're making dua, that's five kalamas inshallah. Number three, the second thing Allah does, which is the third option also, is that in the hereafter, every dua we made is going to be given to us in the form of a reward of a special place in the hereafter. And that is where, unfortunately, we can't experience that right now because if we did, it would make life easier. And that time it says that people will wish and hope, it's too late now, that every dua they made ever in this world that they were never accepted and it all got accepted in the hereafter because now it's really going to be beneficial so that's why every dua we make we're storing it if we don't get it straight away we're still getting a reward for it in this world reward and because it's a worship because dua is a worship we're getting reward for every time we make dua every time we ask allah we're getting a reward for it so it's not going for free now one of the examples of how Allah has to manage everything and we're just a small thing in there. So when I make a dua now, when I make a dua now and I'm like thinking, I really want that thing. And I feel that, you know what, there might be somebody else who wants that thing. But yeah, Allah, please give it to me. But at the back of my mind, I know that Allah is only going to give it to me if it's good for me. But I want to show him what I want. Because I want to get the reward for it and I want to at least make myself satisfied that I've got somebody to ask who is Allah. I am dependent. He is independent. Independent. So now let me give you another example to kind of set this on. Let's just say, where are you, uh, where are you from, brother? Me, I'm from uh, Hayes. Hayes. I'm from okay, Hayes. That, that, that's kind of not as exotic as I. Where are you from originally? Afghanistan. Well, I, I was about to say, man. So I was just in Afghanistan a month ago. Mashallah, where in Afghanistan are you from? Kabul. Oh, that's boring. I thought you were from some other Herat or something. Kabul's all right as well. So let's just say you went to Kabul, right? You bought back some really, really expensive designer uh, ornament, right? Some really beautiful designer ornament to display in your house, right? You, you know, I don't know if you have children or not. Right, you don't have children. But imagine your little brother or cousin, some two-year-old, one and a half year. I want to see that. You're not going to give it because it's delicate. It could break. Are you going to give it to him? <laughs> you wouldn't, right? I mean, people aren't crazy to do that. It's two, three hundred pounds. Right? It's three, three thousand of, uh, sorry, three thousand of Afghanis. What will you do? He's crying. The kid is crying. He wants something. What are you going to do? Are you just going to be bad? Like, I don't care. Or are you going to do something? Yeah. You give him something else, right? You give him a sweet, you give him something else, right? And say, look, take this, and usually kids are okay, they're satisfied. That's exactly where kids with Allah. Why don't you give it to him? It's not appropriate for him right now. It's dangerous. You could waste it. When he is that same kid is 15 years old and he wants to see it now, would you give it to him? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. What about when he's 25? Yeah, now you trust him. You understand what I'm saying? 
That's the same thing with Allah. We don't know. We think we're mature. We think we're everything. But we don't know what the future is. That if Allah gives me this, what's going to happen to me? There's a lot of people Allah gives them that they become arrogant. But that's what Allah wants to teach them a lesson maybe. Right? So ultimately, we're going to keep asking from Allah. We're going to make dua each time. But ultimately, it's up to Allah. We have to remember that. But we do our best. We do our best. And it, emotionally, we feel better when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anyway. And may Allah accept all of our du'as in the best of ways. And may Allah make all of our countries prosper in the right way. And Allah bless us all. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.